what uh, alternatives do the Negro community suggest to the school board for taking care of the problem at the Hill School? I'm going to answer that question, but I don't understand why it is always that we must come up with alternatives. But you give us the most dirty deal you can think of and then ask us for alternatives when we reject it, but here are some alternatives. One, there are two schools. There are six that are in the proximity of C.W. Hill. North Avenue, John Hope, Forest Avenue, Lucky, Fowler, and H.R. Butler. Only two of these, and they are happen to be schools attended by white pupils, are under capacity. All of the Negro schools are over capacity. One thing the board might do and could do would be to take some of these children, put them in Lucky and Fowler. That's one alternative. Another one is, although the superintendent and in fairness to him, uh, I must say, uh, believes that the Clark Howell School is not a reasonable solution because it is being used for audiovisual uh, program and so on, but it is our feeling that some of that facility could be used to take care of the other children. The other thing the board could do would be to proceed and desegregate the entire Atlanta school system, redraw the lines, and put Negro children in schools that are not overcrowded. But the board isn't willing to do this. It is hiding behind. We are working under some sort of court procedure. And all of this says to me is we are not yet ready to do what we ought to do and what we know is right to do. We have come together this morning in this press conference in support of Mr. Jesse Hill and the representation he made in our behalf to the Board of Education on yesterday evening. On my left is Bishop E.L. Hickman of the 6th Episcopal District of the State of Georgia, Senator Leroy Johnson on my right, the Reverend John A. Middleton, pastor of Allen Temple AME Church and the president of the Atlanta chapter of SCLC. The Reverend C.T. Vivian of the national staff of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The Reverend Otto B. Short of the Metropolitan Association. Brother Short, tell us what your club is. Uh, and the president of the interdenominational CME. Minister of the Press and television and radio, we as citizens of this community uh, feel it very sharply, the kind of treatment that the president of the Board of Education gave to Mr. Hill on last night, the unwarranted attack upon one of the most respected and resourceful citizens of this community. There is no person in this city who is more honest and diligent and concerned about the welfare of this community and the people in it than Mr. Jesse C. Hill. And for him to be charged with grandstanding is absolutely ridiculous and unwarranted. I was surprised that a public official, one who is supposed to have understanding and understand the rights of all citizens, would respond in the way Mr. Brewer did on last evening. I have here a statement which each of us present, representing all the people we do, have drawn up and we wish to read to you now. Citizens of the Negro community and officers and directors of the All Citizens Registration Committee deeply resent the unfair, unwarranted personal attack upon Mr. Jesse Hill, one of our most dedicated leaders by school board president OBT Brewer Jr. We support the protest of the C.W. Hill PTA and we are unalterably opposed to the presently contrived plan to send the children 
to the inferior and substandard so-called Howard Annex to force the C.W. Hill children to attend an inferior and substandard facility <coughs> and travel over the hazardous and dangerous downtown connector expressway each day is an action that we cannot support. Senator Johnson wishes to make an additional statement. Reverend Williams and gentlemen, for the last two or three days, I have constantly been confronted by citizens in my community asking me to attend meetings, to meet with them to discuss the C.W. Hill school situation. As a result of more than 10 or 15 or 20 hours of concentration in this area of just listening to people and trying to determine what the real problem was here in this case, I have reached the conclusion by talking with many people in our community that the total Negro community is resentful to the manner in which the C.W. Hill school situation is now being handled. The thing that bothers Negroes here is that there is a tendency for them to feel that the Board of Education is not giving proper consideration to the Negro children in the school system here in our city. And this stems from many experiences that they have had. Less than one year ago, Negro students were carried down to Central High School, placed into a building that had been rejected by whites, a building that the question of safety was a real concern to many, many people. And yet Negro children was placed there over a tremendous protest in the Negro community. Now, one year later, Negroes again are being moved out of a school, placed into substandard facilities, and asked to cross an expressway. Now, we have a fine city, and we have fine public officials. And I have confidence in this city and in the public officials of this city. And I see no reason in the world why we cannot get together and resolve this problem without always making the Negro the loser in every situation. Negro children should not be forced to cross a highway to go to school, nor should they be placed in a portable situation which was supposed to only be in existence for two years, but now have been in existence for four or five. I think the community should know that the Negro community stands solidly behind Jesse Hill in his effort to bring to the board the concern, the aspirations, and the consideration of Negroes in our community. It is without question that I support Mr. Hill and that people throughout our community support Mr. Hill because of the work that he has done and because of his image of responsibility in our community. Thank you very much, Senator Johnson. Uh, we've, we've written letters to Mr. Letson and to Mr. Brewer. Mr. Hill came before the board uh, to explain the problem and all he received was sarcasm, ridicule, and angry criticism. The next step is to communicate through demonstrations. We need to go to the schools and demand complete integration, for this is the only means that we're going to be able to handle our problems in Atlanta. Uh, the judge handed down a decision that, that did not contain all the facts. He thought that everything was right in Atlanta. It may be that we need a major demonstration in the city for the judge to realize what the truth is about the Atlanta school system. For what is happening at this one school is only a symptom of what is happening across the school system. In the Kirkwood area, G.Y. Smith, who's the superintendent of Area 5, are trying to actually see how far that they can push. Uh, here's a man who's pushed parents down the steps. Nothing has been done by the school board about it. Uh, here is a person who's allowed white uh, principals to call Negro teachers uh, 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 little Negro girls. Uh, here is a superintendent uh, uh, which shows uh, that this is a symptom, has allowed Negro students in Murphy High School to be harassed daily by white pupils, yet it's the Negro pupils who are kicked out of school, and nothing is done to the white pupils who harass them. Daily on the buses going from Murphy High School. Mr. Williams. The present building 
could be left and used for another year until the board can provide an adequate facility. There is no reason why the city, order, the city auditorium has to be built in this one year. We've gone these many years without it, and 800 children are involved, so we could go without an auditorium for another year.